every one of us creates waste. But how we deal with that, or don't deal with it, remains one of society's biggest dirty secrets, something that's just not discussed in polite company. Now, I, however, actually love talking garbage. I do it for my whole career, and believe it or not, there are thousands of us waste geeks out there lurking behind the scenes, and we do see what's inside your bins. We talk about that with each other a lot, about the weird stuff you're throwing away, and there are some very strange things. You would think that everyone knows how to use these bins, but it's not quite so. Just to clear something up, you can't actually recycle your dead pets through the yellow bin, for anyone who's wondering. When I do occasionally get to talk to a normal person about waste, invariably we end up talking about our grandparents' generation and the fact that people didn't used to create as much garbage as we do now, and that's absolutely true. Although I'm not sure that it was because Gran was actively trying to save the world. I mean, in my case, I grew up on a farm with my grandparents, and a big part of the reason that we didn't generate much waste was that it was really, really difficult to get rid of it. We didn't have a curbside waste collection. If you wanted to throw something away, you had to lug it up to the ute yourself, you had to drive it down to the local tip that was only occasionally open, and when you got there, you had to make really awkward small talk with the local guy running it, and then unload your rubbish in front of him and everyone else who happened to be standing there at the time. I mean, my grandmother was legitimately concerned about glass recycling in case the tip operator thought the Lamb family's been drinking too much. <laughs> and she possibly had a point. <clears throat> now, just like everyone else in the room tonight, I now live in Sydney, where I have got a fantastically convenient waste service. No one can see what I'm putting out there, and I've even got little wheels on my bin to make it really easy for me to carry lots and lots of waste the two metres to the curb. And if you live in an apartment, you might not even have to wheel your own bin at all. I mean, by and large, us Sydney-siders, the worst we have to suffer is the occasional sound of breaking glass as our recycling's collected and that horrifying panic of thinking someone's missed your bin and going, what am I going to do without a bin service for a whole week until they come back again? <laughs> now, obviously, this isn't the case all over the world. I mean, there are many parts of the world where waste is still a basic health issue. Shockingly, that photo that I've just flashed up, that's not a third world country, that's not a historical photo. That is what regional waste management looks like in some of, some of Australia's regional areas. It's quite a scary, scary thought. In Sydney, of course, the household waste system works so well that it's easy to forget how important a service it is. When we take our waste out, something magical and mysterious happens and, hey presto, the bin's empty and we can just fill it up with more garbage. So where does that waste actually go to and what really happens to it? Well, for the last 50 or so years, the main focus for us has been trying to address those health issues and we've developed a system that's kind of out of sight, out of mind, based around the use of sanitary landfills. Now, don't get me wrong, a sanitary landfill is a whole lot better than an unsanitary landfill, which is an open trench in the ground, you know, crawling with vermin and bubbling away with toxic leachate. But even with a best practice landfill, we're hardly talking about the pinnacle of engineering design. I mean, if you're lucky, it might have an engineered liner system to try and stop the worst of that leachate, the toxic landfill juice, from dribbling out into the groundwater. And it might have some gas collection wells to try and pick up a bit of that odorous methane emission. And if you've got enough waste, you might even generate a little bit of electricity. But really, there's an inherent problem with the whole system. Even if you've got the best darn hole in Australia, there's just an issue with the fact of you're pushing resources into this hole. There are very few items in our waste stream that serve no higher purpose in the world than filling up a big hole in the ground. We could talk about any item you like, but and I like to play this game, so if anyone wants to catch me at the bar afterwards, we can go through any item in the bin at all. <laughs> but for now, we'll just talk through the example of a, of a metal can. You know, the, the materials to get that have been mined out of the ground somewhere. They get transported thousands of kilometres to where they can be processed to a form to make into a can. Then they go off to another factory where they get filled up with some sort of food. Then they get transported all the way back to Sydney, and they finally make their way into a supermarket shelf. You know, some lucky shopper picks it up, and then a few weeks later, They've got a screaming hangover and they go, you know what, I need a big breakfast, whip out the can of baked beans. Now, once they've eaten their beans, if that can goes into the yellow bin, it's reasonably easy for us to recycle it. You know, we can pick that up and instead of going, and going through that whole process of mining the raw materials, we can insert that back into the productive economy. But if our seedy chef, you know, throws it into the wrong bin, uh, either because they're just a poor recycler or they're, they're so blurry that they can't tell the bin colours, the chances are, even in Sydney, that can is going to get pushed into a landfill. It's going to get dropped into a big, deep hole in the ground. Someone's going to scrape a little bit of dirt over it, and it's going to sit there until it eventually breaks down and contributes to that landfill leachate problem. I mean, really, guys, is this the best we can do with these materials? Can't we do better than affording them a cheap mass burial? 
It's not just a can. I mean, you pick any material you like and there are better things to do with this. It can be difficult to comprehend the scale of the waste issue when you're only looking inside your own bin. But trust me, when you've stood at the end of the pipe and you're looking at everything that's coming through the system, this is a really, really scary problem. We keep talking about trying to be a less wasteful society and trying to generate less waste, which is obviously a great ideal, but it's not working. The amount of stuff we're throwing away is increasing at a terrifying rate. Across Australia, we currently generate and throw out 50 million tonnes of materials, and we're on track for that to be something like 80 million tonnes, the way things are going. Of that, only about half of it's being recovered, and the rest of it's going into a landfill. It's a really scary problem. If you look in New South Wales, the average household generates about 24 kilos of waste per week. That's about 1.2 tonnes a year, and that doesn't even count the things that are away from home consumption. So anything that you throw out tonight and don't take home to your household bin doesn't get counted in that 1.2 tonne figure. In Sydney, we think we're pretty good recyclers. Now, pretty much every household has a yellow bin for recycling. And most households, about 90%, have access to a green bin if they've got enough of a garden to generate some organics. The problem is that that's only dealing with about half of our waste stream. There are items that you just can't recycle in your yellow bin and you can't recycle in your green bin. And we can't just keep clapping ourselves on the back and pretending that dealing with the easy half of our waste problem is enough. We need to tackle the rest of this solution. We need to find solutions for that red bin mixed waste. Happily, there's plenty of examples of where this works. You know, I'm not talking any crazy futuristic concepts here. If you look to the most progressive European cities, they've all but eliminated the use of landfill altogether. In Sydney, well, sorry, in the whole of Australia, there are a handful of red bin recycling facilities that we could talk about. But the biggest one in Sydney, and the one that I know the most about because our company works with them, is Global Renewables at Eastern Creek. This facility has been there since 2004, and it processes about a quarter of a million tonnes of household red bin waste each year. Since it's been operating, it has managed to divert almost two million tonnes of waste away from landfill. Waste that would have gone into a landfill if this facility didn't exist. So how does it do that? Well, you find that about half of the average Sydney red bin is made up of organics. It's your, your food stuffs. And the big product that comes out of this type of facility is a compost that New South Wales farmers use to improve their soil productivity. So if, you're, if you had breakfast this morning and you left over a bit of rock melon skin, if your red bin goes to this sort of facility, then that rock melon is going to get made into a compost. It's going to get returned back to soil. And the nutrients that were sucked up by that rock melon when it grew are going to get returned to the soil and make it more productive so that we can grow more food. The alternative, of course, is that you throw it into a landfill, in which point that rock melon skin, the same piece of material, is just going to rot away. It's going to create greenhouse gas emissions and it's certainly not going to do anyone any favours at all. The other benefit, of course, is when you're processing the red bin, you've got a second chance to recover those materials that probably should never have been in the red bin in the first place. Things like our baked bean can that accidentally ended up there instead of the recycling. So you can pull them out if you're processing that material. And of course, they're not going to be quite as clean. They're going to be a little bit smellier than they are from the yellow bin. They're not going to be worth as much. But it's a whole lot better than just pushing them into a hole in the ground. So the best Australian facilities, between making a compost product and recovering those recyclables, the best facilities can recycle about 70% of the red bin waste. If you combine that with our existing systems for curbside recycling and garden organics, you're talking about a solution that then is accounting for about 85% of the household waste stream. Obviously, that's a whole lot better than only dealing with half of the waste stream. However, 85% is still not quite good enough for a perfectionist, and we'd like to be at closer to 100. To get closer to 100, we also need to find opportunities to get value out of the materials that, can't, that are in the red bin and that can't be made into compost and that can't be recycled. We're talking about things like filmy plastic and textiles. The good news is that these sort of materials also have a real value, certainly a much higher value than just filling up a hole in the ground. On a pound-for-pound -pound basis, that sort of material has about 80% of the energy content of black coal, and we can use this material to make an alternative fuel source so that we can reduce our reliance on those fossil fuels. We're a bit behind the game here in, in Sydney. If you look internationally, and particularly the UK, there's an absolutely booming trade in this sort of alternative fuel source. And it's traded like a commodity, like just like any other energy source, as it should be. In New South Wales, we haven't had any of this sort of activity uh, until recently, but the New South Wales government has recently come up with a, a pretty smart policy that allows us to now capture the energy resources from that very small part of the materials 
that can't be recycled and can't be made into compost and can't be used in a higher purpose. With that sort of approach, we're now getting really, really close to being able to find a solution for all of the waste that's in that red bin. So they're the options, guys. We can either push all this material into a landfill or we can develop best practice systems that can recover 90, 95% of the red household mixed bin. Can I get anyone here who would, with, with that information, if you would actively prefer that your waste went to a landfill instead of being recycled, could you stand up? <laughs> See, you, you laugh, but if I asked that question in a, in a waste event where half the people owned a landfill, I'd get a different response. You know, the, the issue is that when the asset you own is a hole that's half full of garbage, you don't really have many other options but to keep filling it up with garbage. So we've established that most people here would, would rather that their red bin is recycled rather than put into a landfill. Can, can I just get everyone to stand up for a, for a moment for me? Sorry for the inconvenience. Right. So we'd all rather the recycling outcome. Can I get you to stay standing up if you would be happy to pay an extra, your household, an extra $1 per week to have a 90% recycling rate rather than have your red bin go to landfill? And sit down if you, if you wouldn't pay the dollar. I haven't seen anyone sit yet. Uh, $2, would anyone sit down at $2? I would really love to keep going and see where this goes, but <laughs> I'll let you all sit down now. Um, you know, the reality is that's it. You know, it's, we're already there. You know, $2 per household per week covers the gap between pushing these resources into a big hole where they're wasted and actually recovering them with best practice systems. So the obvious question is, you know, why aren't we doing that? If we're talking about we've got the technology, we've proven that it all works, we can do it at a cost that's acceptable to the community, now, why isn't this happening all over the place? I mean, a big part of the problem is just complacency. You know, until we talked about it, you possibly didn't even think about where your red bin went. The other part of the problem is, even if you did care about where your red bin goes, you don't, as an individual, get to choose where that truck goes after it picks up your waste. I mean, these decisions about what happens with our waste streams are made by local councils. And if we want more sustainable systems, then we really have to expect our councils to step up and provide them for the community. We know that this stuff works. It's been working. You know, there are Sydney councils that have been doing this for over a decade. And then there's a bunch of other councils that have been sitting on their hands. And we won't even talk about our cousins in Melbourne or in Brisbane who haven't even got around to sitting on their hands yet. They're so far behind the game. <coughs> but we know that this works. We can do it. The problem is we all just need to stop being so complacent about waste. We need to stop pretending that it's magic pixies that are taking care of everything in our bin. It's, it's us guys, you know, we have to choose how we're going to deal with this stuff we throw away. We all need to be more conscious about it and we need to step up and be responsible for it. It's well past time that all of our modern cities adopted a modern approach to their waste management. <laughs> um, ladies and gentlemen, Garth Lamb, fantastic. Before I let you go... Before I let you go, uh, what's the strangest thing you've ever actually seen down the pipe? You, you talked about people's pets. Come on, spill it. Spill it on the landfill. I mean, okay, so we see absolutely everything. But the strangest things are where people make really odd decisions on which bin they're going to put them in. <laughs> Sex toys. Sex toys are not going to be recycled if you put them in your yellow bin. Yeah. <laughs> There's going to be a bunch of people who are at the recycling facility who are going to go, oh, this is funny, yeah. but it's not going to get recycled. So... Don't All try. Right. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. Right. Fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, Garth Lamb. Yeah. <laughs>